oil is the elixir of life for everybody. The Middle East and Russia. And what we've got for you here is BTV 4174. The ruble ratcheting higher. Hedge funds are long. The oil market is rallying. This is Brent on the move. Can these momentum continue? Do you believe in these rallies? Well, there's been a very big change, is that for quite some time the supply demand for oil was not great, with really, relatively weak demand coming from China. But we seem to go into an era of political intervention from the big producers. It's what we see, what we saw yesterday in Russia. Uh, Putin very strongly supporting the cuts in oil production, and they were supporting the long-term uh, oil prices. One interesting chart would be to see the Russian economy versus uh, Putin's popularity. You know, he has 2018 elections coming, he needs to kick that uh, economy going and uh, bringing oil prices up is one of the best and surest ways of doing it. So we're going to see them intervening and strongly putting a floor on the oil prices and hopefully increasing it for them. Yeah, we got some mixed, if we got mixed signals out of Russia, certainly Putin was on the side of uh, being in favor of the caps, wasn't he? We spoke to the IEA's uh, Fatih Birol yesterday and he was saying that if we get to $60 a barrel on oil, then that really being brings the U.S. shale drillers back in. How much is this, uh, this, this threat of further market supply, how much is that uh, limiting the gains that we're going to make in prices here? Well, yeah, the structure of the oil market is different than some years ago. You know, OPEC does not control as much at this, as it used to. The uh, United States remains outside OPEC and is the biggest producer in the world. It's a very free market economy that as soon as prices increase, you're going to start seeing a lot of drilling, a lot of supply coming on, on board. So that's a reality. Uh, therefore, probably what these countries are doing is making sure it doesn't get worse. You know, if you have a range between 50 and 60 dollars, that's a good price for low cost producers like Russia, like Saudi Arabia, and at the same time, it's not a price under which all of the marginal supply comes on board very, very quickly. So probably we're going to have a, a managed range around those, those levels that is comfortable for everybody, and, but we don't foresee much, much higher prices because, because of that reason exactly. But of course, it's about a coalescing, isn't it? It's not just OPEC and Russia. There are many other players in this game. What we've got for you here is history which is quotas versus reality. You've got, in, in the white line, you have OPEC production, and there's the production quotas. So they have history in just not sticking to anything that they agreed to. There needs to be a demonstrable change from Russia and from Saudi Arabia to make any agreement in November work. Yeah, and even worse, imagine that they already said that some of the most important countries are not going to be part of the cuts. Uh, Iran is going to be left out of that, Nigeria is going to be left out of that, uh, Libya also. So some of the countries that are behind the highest increases of supply already said we're not going to be part of it. So the big, big countries, Saudi, Venezuela, Russia, strangely the ones that have uh, political reasons to do it in the short term. You know, Venezuela is under very, very uh, tight conditions right now. They need a higher price. Saudi Arabia lost 25% of the foreign reserves in the last two years. So those that are in a desperate situation have decided to move despite some other countries that have been left out. So it's already a, an, a less important OPEC with half of the OPEC not following. Mm, and, and some of the OPEC members dispute the figures that are out there in the markets around how much they produce. I know that uh, one of the Iraqi oil minister was railing in, in a recent uh, press conference against uh, the numbers that he sees in the market. He says they're just not true. That's not what we produce. We produce this. So in amongst all of that confusion and the not complete to quotas, that there doesn't seem to be in, uh, an entirely clear picture of who produces what. Yeah, and historically they all cheat. I mean, we've seen that every single time. OPEC but that's essentially what that's telling yeah. you. That's cheating personification, isn't it? Exactly. So we, we are going to see a strong uh, message. I think uh, it's not, it's not um, a coincidence that right now Saudi Arabia is on the market for a $10 billion bond and for the IPO of Saudi Aramco, uh, that Venezuela is in the market exchanging a bond and suddenly they're all having a very tough talk at the OPEC level. So reality is going to probably be quite different when we see the actual numbers.